To start this new chapter off, we are going to begin with a definition, as is typical when you're starting a new subject. So the definition that we're going to give is a vector function or a vector valued function. The two titles are synonymous, it's just a matter of whether you want to call it a vector function or a vector valued function. Do keep in mind that when we say the word function, this is a concept that we know about from back in our pre-calculus days. A function is a relation where we give it an input and the function gives us a unique output. For a vector function, the input is going to be a real number. Typically we use a parameter for this, and most common parameter that we're going to use in the scope of this class will be t. The output is going to be a vector. Now this vector could be a vector in two dimensions, or it could be a vector in three dimensions, or technically we could go into higher dimensions, but because we're trying to keep it relevant to the real world, we'll stick with two-dimensional and three-dimensional. So the look of a two-dimensional vector function, the most typical variable that we use for a vector function is r, and that r is going to relate to a radius, but you'll see that momentarily. So we'll use our vector brackets, and we will use two component functions. Typically f and g would be used for this, so f and g are referred to as component functions. If we were to go three-dimensional with it, then because we're, you know, math people, we like patterns. After f and g, we would go with h. And technically, h would classify as a component function as well. <clears throat> Now typically the way that you can create a vector function is by starting with parametric functions or parametrically defined things and then just throw it all into a vector. So an example of one such thing would be the unit circle. The unit circle is something that gets defined parametrically with x being the cosine of t and y being the sine of t. So if I were to combine these into one single vector function, I could call it r of t and say that the two component functions would be the cosine of t and the sine of t. Now if I wanted to consider what the graph of the unit circle looks like, it would look like the following. Now the question becomes, how does this graph relate to this vector valued function? Well, with a vector valued function, again, we're starting with an input of a real number and an output of a vector. A vector typically has to have an initial point and a terminal point. If you assume initial point is always the origin, then for any value of t that we plug in here, we're going to get a vector whose initial point is at the origin, whose terminal point is some point on this curve. Now for two dimensions this creates what's known as a planar curve. If we were to do this in three dimensions, the set of all terminal points of a vector valued function would be referred to as a space curve. More generally, a curve defines something that is one-dimensional, that exists within a higher number of dimensions. A circle is a one-dimensional thing, though it does encompass an area. The circle itself is one-dimensional. When it exists in two dimensions, we call it a planar curve, because two dimensions would be a plane. In three dimensions, we would have a space, which is why we refer to it as a space curve if we were to bump it up into three dimensions. Common example of a space curve relates to what we just did here. We just said that if we use a cosine and a sine, <clears throat> then we have what is essentially a circle. The orientation of the circle would be that it rotates around counterclockwise, or in the positive direction. Now, if I were to throw on something additional, like a T, then you would have something that in the xy plane is rotating around like this, but in the z direction is coming up toward you. 
so getting closer and closer when viewed from above. Now, I'm not an expert at drawing by any means, and so this might be a little bit rough, but uh, something that rotates around and around while still rising. You know what? I've done worse. It's not great, but it'll get the job done. Anybody who has studied deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, before is probably familiar with this shape. It is referred to as a helix. A helix is what you get when in two, direct, um, excuse me, two of the variables you have a rotation and in the third direction, uh, excuse me, in the third variable you have something moving forward in a linear fashion. A helix is also what you get when you stretch out a slinky if you want an oversimplification.